Hey guys, and welcome to my Let's Play of Super Meat Boy on the Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, it's a game that just came out literally 24 hours ago, so I'm not attempting to give you a 100% perfect run or anything. The main point of this Let's Play is actually to serve as kind of a review slash testimonial, mainly to strongly encourage you to pick up this awesome game. It's a platformer in a kind of retro style, meaning, mainly, it's insanely difficult, and I mean that in the best way possible. There's so many good things you can say about this game, including the fact that the narrative is rife with homages and tributes and, you know, offhanded nods to retro 8-bit and 16-bit games that always come from a place of love, and the controls are super tight. And really, the game is just a ton of fun, so I'm gonna let the first cutscene play here so you can experience the narrative style. So that is the basic premise of Super Meat Boy. Dr. Fetus has kidnapped your girlfriend and you have to go save her. The gameplay is very simple and I don't mean that as an insult. Really, you only have three buttons. You have your directions, which you can use the analog stick or the directional pad. You have a run, you can use X or the right trigger for that. And then a jump, which is A. And your only goal is to get to the end. Sounds easy actually gets insanely difficult. So we're gonna start on chapter one, The Forest, and here's another excellent cutscene. All right, God, the music in this game is really fantastic. So The Forest is your first world, meaning that things start out a little bit easy, as you can see on this level. So yeah, just run and jump. The wall jump becomes insanely important. You have to use it in basically every level. The main thing that I want to compliment with this game is that the controls are so tight. Uh, you never, when you die, feel that it's the controller's problem. I mean, that was me just being an idiot right there. So, your goal is to rescue Bandage Girl at the end of each level. There's only really three grades you can get. You can either get a pass, you can get a fail, which means you died somewhere, or you can get an A+. And getting the A+, means you got it under a certain amount of time. When you get an A+, it unlocks the Dark World version of the stage, which is basically the same stage layout, but a lot harder. So on these ones, there's a lot of rotating saw blades. So those were the first four levels, very, very easy. Now they start introducing obstacles that can actually flay you. There's so many different ways to die in this game. You can die if you touch the saw. Sometimes you can die if you touch the ground. If you can die if you go off the screen. It's uh, really ruthless in the way that it kills you, and that's what makes it so good. So I'm not sure if you saw earlier, but uh, I checked out my statistics screen, and I actually have died 1,200 times in this game already, and I just got it, uh, I guess, 24 hours ago. I couldn't have played it for more than three or four hours thus far. So we're about halfway through World 1 now. You might be thinking to yourself that this looks pretty easy. It's not. This is my third or fourth time playing through this world. Uh, I'm only on World 4 right now, which is Hell, and it's extremely difficult. This level is where things start to get rough for me most of the time. If you're not paying attention, you can get a little bit twitchy and just run off, uh, run off platforms instead of doing what you want to do. Yeah, so this level has been a pain in the ass for me for a long time. There's also, uh, on some of these levels, you don't see it because I believe I've collected most of the bandages, but there's bandages that serve as kind of like an in-game collectible. And when you collect a certain amount, you can unlock new characters, including uh, like the Castle Crashers, Tim from Braid, and all of them have unique powers. But I like Super Meat Boy. He controls very, very well. The bandages are exceptionally hard to find. You have to get them and then get to the end of the level, which on later levels is a big problem. As you can see, I'm getting totally massacred by some of these saws. So don't think that just because this is the first world, it's uh, a tutorial world. 
Part of the problem is I'm going too fast. Part of the problem is I'm still new to the game. Uh, but mostly there's just a lot of difficulty here, and you'll see that definitely in the higher levels. Right, Blood Mountain. The level titles oftentimes uh, are references to either things in music or pop culture or in games themselves, which is really nice. There's a level in World 4 called Weeby. So, like, Steve Weeby, or Weeb, I suppose, from Donkey Kong. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, fist, uh, the King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. And the level has, uh, like, Donkey Kong-style barrels that are on fire that you have to avoid. So there's lots of nods like that, which are really nice. Now the game starts shooting saw blades at you, and this is really nothing in comparison to what happens later in the game. There's heat-seeking missiles that shoot out enemies whenever they collide. There's lasers that track your progress and make it almost impossible. Sometimes they'll throw two, like, bisecting lasers at you. So you have to find, like, the one pixel spot on the map where you can actually make it. In, uh, comparison to those, these saws, even rotating saws, not really that dangerous. This level, though, always messes me up. And I think this is really where things start to pick up in the game and you realize, oh, it's not fucking around. So every platform has a rotating saw blade. I strongly considered editing out my deaths, and I will do that on the later levels, because I just die over and over and over. But here, I think it, it would kind of be betraying the spirit of the game, which is you die all the time. See, that time I just ran off the edge. You can die even after you finish the level. And you need to know that going in. This is not a game where you're going to you know, speedrun it on your first attempt. You're going to die constantly, particularly if you're impatient like I am. But the game maintains its momentum, for one, and I can't uh, overstate how important this is. The music is excellent, and it doesn't restart every time you have to restart the level. That is so important. I've been playing a lot of retro games where the music restarts every time you die, which really slows the game down. It doesn't make you want to play as much. Not, that's not a, a slight on retro games, which I love. I'm just saying this is an improvement. And also, of course, you respawn so quickly. This is another level that's uh, that's pretty tricky from the get-go, and you can compare this to the, the first level of World 1, where you just basically jump on a hill to finish the level, and you'll notice how fast the difficulty ramps up. And it keeps ramping up at this pace, so by the time you get to World 3 or 4, you're dealing with some seriously difficult obstacles. So you see there's a bandage right there just by the saw, so the game designer's laughing his ass off while I'm trying to collect that. Yeah, <laughs> second time in a row. The other thing is the bandages, you need a lot of them to unlock characters. I think the first unlockable character you get is at 10 bandages. Bandages, even on World 1, pretty tricky to get. So yeah, consider this uh, my strong recommendation to pick up this game. Everything about it uh, screams nostalgia, and the control and gameplay is so tight and fun. Here is the first boss, Lil Slugger. So again, another cutscene. The boss fights in this game, and I guess they're not really fights, but the, the boss encounters are uh, really usually the most fun levels in the entire game, just because of the way they make you defeat the boss. I, I won't spoil anything for people who haven't gotten to a later boss. This one is just a very simple chase, but it's still really fun. Although I die constantly on jumps like that. Um, yeah, but there's other ones where you have to uh, either race an enemy and get to the finish before they do, or you have to hit some keys in order to drop a mechanism on them. I'm not gonna spoil anything more than that. But yeah, the boss encounter is really fun, and I think these are uh, not in the Flash game. So this is maybe part of the encouragement to pick it up. I, I haven't played the Flash game myself, but I've noticed a lot of people saying, oh, why would I pay 800 points for a Flash game? Don't think that way, don't have that attitude. This game is amazing, and there's definitely reasons to pick it up. Uh, even if leaderboards don't mean anything to you, and they don't mean anything to me, uh, there's so many new levels, and obviously new characters. If you're a fan of the Flash game, it's worth picking it up, particularly before it goes up in price. So we just defeated the boss, and I love, love this cutscene coming up.
game really just has a fantastic sense of humor. So that was World 1, or Chapter 1, The Forest. Stick around for Part 2, which will be a trip through the dark world of the forest, where the shit really hits the fan.